All right, boys, here we go back with some more standard action. Today, we got a pretty sweet metagame choice in Jund Windgrace. This deck focuses on its powerful graveyard interactions like getting back lands with Soul of Windgrace or reanimating Titan of Industry with Cruelty of Gix. You guys know what time it is. It's time to drop a like, subscribe, join the crew, and as always, don't forget, check out my socials and check out the King Silva Gaming Discord. And with all that said, let's get into the games, baby. Let's go. All right, boys, welcome in. Got a pretty special one today, Jund Wingrace. Uh, pretty much, uh, you know, a deck I've been jamming on ladder a bunch, uh, trying to uh, rank up a little bit. And, uh, yeah, we're on the draw here, and it yeah, looks pretty decent. We got the one of cut down and a couple three drops, so pretty strong. And I think, the, the you know, kind of like by far the best card in this deck is Fable the Mirror Breaker. You know, discards Titan of Industry, kind of ramps you into uh, Cruelty of Gix. Does a whole lot in this deck. Consider on turn one. It's probably mono blue. One of the uh, kind of breakout decks. I don't, I don't even know if it's really a breakout deck, but <laughs> it's a deck from uh, from Dominaria that has become relevant. I like kind of like these style of lands, but not really. I don't know. Yeah, that dies to cut down. I can't imagine I play I play cut down here over a three drop though. Like, a new Fable down here is pretty good, but if we wait a turn, then cut down's not good enough. That's yeah, tough. I guess we just cut down. We want this game to go longer. I'm fine taking a little bit of a mana disadvantage here to uh, use some removal while we can. Okay. Uh, I mean, Trespasser is kind of a counterspell bait here, if you will. I don't know if they really have anything that's flash in their deck. They probably have like Spectral Sailor, or not not Spectral Sailor, the Spectral Adversary, the 2 1 Spirit dude. He's still legal. I think I'm gonna go Trespasser here and basically make them waste a counter spell. Because I want Fable to resolve here. Like, obviously, our hand's like a billion lands. Okay, I'm actually gonna play the Death Cap Glade here over the, the Proving Ground, because we're probably gonna cycle this this game. Ledger Shredder, sure. Solar Wingers is pretty good. They've shown us Essence Capture, which means they probably could have another one. So I guess I'm just going to play Springs and play Fable here and kind of try to play around the Spell Pierce. Or make Disappear, if you will. The next turn, probably we'll, we'll try to jam this, uh, this Soul here. Soul's pretty sweet. Obviously, it gets countered, so it's not, you know, not incredible in this matchup, but it's really, really good in the mid-range mirrors. Like, if you can play it, untap with it, and get a land back on both swing, on both the swing and the attack, in the ETB, it's, like, so incredible. Okay. I right, definitely discarding this forest. I guess we're just going to dump both these lands. Let's see what we can dig up here. Titan is pretty good. We're only a land away from casting Titan, so that's pretty sweet. All right, well, let's play a soul. See what happens. Wow, soul actually resolved. Nice. Uh, our opponent doesn't have any lands. So we're just going to get the Proving Ground. So I could play a Bank Buster here. It's going to trigger Connive on the Shredder, though. And it lets them see another card. But, like, they probably just don't have an answer for Wing Graves. I'm not going to play this Bank Buster here. I don't really think it's necessary. Plus, like, next turn... They didn't have a counterspell this turn for Wing Grace. Next turn, I want my Titan to resolve. Ooh, Thirst for Discovery is pretty good. But, like, I want to make them have to answer this and be able to counter my Titan. Also, not to mention, Fable's going to flip here as well, so we got a ton of options. Ooh, the Terror. Double Terror. Nice. That's pretty sweet. And they discarded Slip out the back. Well, I mean, I can't imagine I do anything but try to cast the Titan here. I guess we just hold back this Wing Grace. Yeah, I think that's our play. Nice. Titan Resolving's big. So, I guess we do Shield Counter 4-4 four four here. I mean, 5 life isn't bad either, but I think a 4-4 four four is worth it more. So, shield counter, 4-4. Four four. And we'll just put the shield counter on the wing grace here. 
the next turn, obviously, we can start copying our Titan of Industry, and that's when things really get out of hand. Uh, I think I'll jam here. I can't imagine they have... Well, if they have a fade, if they have a Fading Hope here for this when I attack, like, it's kind of hairy. I don't really think there's any reason to attack here. I'm going to pass here and play it smart. I'm going to bounce my Titan here. Sure. Yeah, so it's like we would have attacked and Fading Hope would have been really, really good there, right? How many Fading Hopes have they used? Or ha how many have we seen? Two. Attacking with both. All right, well, I guess I block here and take seven. Go to 11. Maybe a slip out the back here. Sure. And another terror, okay. Flaring Terror is like one of those cards that you wouldn't expect to be good. But it does, does quite a bit here. All right, well, pretty easy play here. Titan. Four, four, and five life. As long as we keep this game close, we're just gonna win with the value of uh, Kiki Jiki and Titan. And that's usually all she wrote. So big W on the board for game one. And uh, what are we looking at for the sideboard here? So I think Trespasser is gonna add a premium in this one, right? Because it stops Talarian Terror, or at least limits Talarian Terror. So we gotta look for ways to interact that are cheap. Um, I don't think Mythic Massacre is that that impressive here. I mean, Hearse like kind of stops Solarian Terror, but it's also like pretty bad on the draw. I think we want Grasps. I think Cut Down's probably fine for uh, for Ledger Shredder. Hmm. Tough call here. So they're probably they're probably playing the the Dijin as well. I mean, let's do, like, what we don't want, right? I mean, Cruelty of Gix seems, like, incredibly slow in this one. Terra Sunder seems pretty bad. They don't really have a ton of enchantments, and, like, four mana Doomblade is not terrible, but, you know, it's not really what you're looking for in this matchup. I'm actually going to bring in the Hearses here and take out, like, some Bank Busters. I know, like, Bank Buster obviously is a better card than Hearse, but if we can limit the Talarian Terrors even a little bit, I think it's probably worth it. Uh, I think a lot of people would be like, yo, you got to bring in Duress in this matchup. The problem with Duress in matchups like this is that some, some games are just going to draw a bunch of creatures, right? Because they're just going to draw a bunch of creatures, and then Duress is just going to be a dud if you can't if you can't answer the creatures. So in that in that retrospect, like I'd rather just play through the counter spells as, as well as I can and uh, just try to win the game that way. Because we have a lot of ways to like make them have to answer a card, like Wind Graze, Titan, uh, stuff like that. Do I want to keep in two Cruelty of Gix on the draw? I mean, it's good because it can reanimate Titan, right? And like, and like that's the best the best use for it. Hedesuga consumes all is also pretty interesting. They don't really have Spectral Sailor, though. Yeah, I think I'm just going to roll this. Okay, this is an easy mulligan. All right, this hand's Dece. Hand's Dece. Man, I want to keep this whole hand. I think it's correct just to put back the Titan, though. Like, it's kind of just like Magical Christmas Land to get a Titan here. <laughs> I'm just going to go Swamp, try to cut down a Ledger Shredder, hopefully. All right. Oh, play a land. Play a, play a Jin here. Let me cut down your Jin. Nice. All right, well, what do we want to throw into the Counterspell Void first here? Like, Fable the Mirror Breaker is just the best case scenario here if it resolves, right? I think the odds of it resolving are probably, like, in the low single single digit percentiles, but, like, <laughs> it might be worth it here. I mean, like, Trespasser's not doing anything. It's just a 3-3. Hearse is decent here. I think I'm going to go for the Fable. I, I want to, like, start weeding through their counter spells. Nice. That's a big fable resolve. Like they're just, they're just gonna fade and hope it, but it's huge that we resolve this. You know, I think sometimes that's important to realize is like sometimes you just gotta look at your hand, look at the board, and be like, okay, you know, we're not that far behind on the board. Let's make a play to win the game here. 
Uh, I think I'm just gonna dump the hers here. It's not doing a ton here, right? Yeah. Draw two. Yeah, I mean, Wingrace is pretty good here. We don't have a land in the yard, though. Um, is it better than Trespasser? I think I'm just gonna go Trespasser. It's gonna demand an answer anyway. And if they want a Fading Hope it, they'd have to discard a card. Okay. Counterspell, sure. Ooh, Delver, okay. Well, Delver's gonna get cut down. Nice land. Okay, well, I guess I'm just gonna jam a Cruelty of Gix here. It's not gonna resolve, but we can dream. Oh, actually resolved, wow. Well, I mean, get our Titan back. <laughs> and just like that, that's an easy game one dub on the board. Sometimes the games just end up like that, you know? Sometimes you just play Cruelty of Gex on turn five, get a Titan back, and that's all she wrote. On to the next, baby, on to the next. All right, boys, here we go. Back for game number two. Uh, we're on the draw here, and uh, can't complain. This hand looks great. This is exactly the hand you want for a solo wing grace. Ooh, the Alexander's Lounge. Okay, a little bit of Grixis on the other side. So, Riveteer's Outlook. And I know what you're thinking, Riveteer's Outlook. Maybe not the most sexy, uh... <laughs> maybe not the most sexy land you could play in Standard. But trust me, it's only there for Solo Wing Grace. It's basically just Evolving Wilds that gains you a life. It's not horrible, but it's also not great. But I think it's definitely a necessity in this deck. I see a lot of lists playing in it without, but, like, you always want your Wing Grace to be good, right? So, like, when you don't draw, like, one of the Sagas and you just have, like, a heavy removal hand, it's important that you have, like, a Riveteer's Outlook in, in your uh, in your graveyard. It also is, like, pretty sweet, like, looping it late game with uh, with Soul Wing Grace to, like, gain some extra life. So, teaching to the Kirin. Not a fan of this card, but, I mean, it's kind of a necessity, again, in the deck, where it's it's kind of like a scavenging news, like a really slow scavenging news, but it also kind of locks up the ground early. But it's something to do on turn two, which I think is like incredibly important in a deck like this. All right, Bank Buster, pretty, pretty a custom start for most mid-range decks in this format. Got the Terra Sunder at the ready, but I do think we're gonna take the turn off to play, uh, play Fable here. Saga into Saga, baby. Yes, sir. Yeah, a lot of people were, uh, you know, asking me about Terra Sunder. I, I do think Terra Sunder is, like, pretty essential in this deck right now. I think that, obviously, you have Bank Buster, you have Fable. You have a ton of important to deal with enchantments and artifacts right now, so it's important to have a card like Terra Sunder. And, like, at worst-case scenario, it's four mana. Like I said, it's four mana Doomblade, right? Or it's Utter End for four mana, right? It's really not that bad. Actually pretty decent. With the teachings. I mean, I think I'm just going to jam his soul here. The greedy play here is to discard this soul. I feel like they have a make disappear, though. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. I think I'm just going to dump the forest. I think, like, double soul is pretty, pretty decent here. Attack for two. Alright, well, soul. Nice. Get back a land. We're gonna just get back our outlook. Gain another life. Get our forest out of our deck. The next turn we can go like Fable plus uh, Terra Sunder here. Pretty good stuff. Pretty good stuff. Infernal Grasp, sure. I think we are A-OK -okay with that that play from our opponent. Okay, so we gotta be mindful here of the Meat Hook Massacre. Okay, well, I'll go to attacks. So next turn, they're gonna have five mana, so I wanna make it hard for them, right? I'm gonna attack with these two. I'm gonna just make a counter here over a Spirit. I'm gonna exile their grasp and put a counter on this because I want to make them have their their fifth land here. I could put it on the Kiki Jiki, but I think it's important to make this card relevant, right? Like this token. Let's play a uh, Outlook here. Go grab a uh, Swamp, I guess. Just 
Let's play a Fable here. In a turn, they're probably just going to activate the Bank Buster. Then we'll just go Terra Sunder. Ooh, they have a Negate. Okay. All right, well, I'm still just going to Terra Sunder this. The Bank Buster is good value throughout the long game, and uh, we, we really just want to keep tightening the vice on our opponent here. Cut down, sure. Yeah, I mean, cut down's main responsibility in standard right now is just for Fable on the backside of Fable. Pretty sweet in that regard. All right, well, Titan would have been really good here if we had a seventh land, but it's all good. I guess we just attack with both and put a counter here. Pretty decent. Yeah, that puts a decent amount of pressure on our opponent, and they're missing land drops. Yeah. Alright. Exile their negate, I guess. Also pretty interesting they're playing negate in the main deck. Haven't seen that too much. Let's play a soul here. Get back our Riveteer's Outlook, gain another life, fetch another land. Yep, already got our triple green here for Titan. Ooh, Urtai. One of my favorites. Okay. I mean, I think 4-4 four, four, destroy this is probably just the play. Like, I, don't, <laughs> I could put, like, a shield counter here. Don't think that's really necessary, though. All right, we'll attack. We'll trade here with the Urtai. Big Titan... 4-4, four, four, destroy the Fable. Big time value. Shieldred. See, this is why you always got to set your stop and your upkeep so that you can upkeep Terra Sunder. It's not going to matter here because we're just going to do it anyway, but... That could have been relevant. Big game one dub. Big game one dub. Usually how game one goes in the mid-range mirrors. This deck usually destroys mid-range decks. Okay, so let's start looking at our sideboard here, right? They got a lot of interaction. They got Spell Pierce, Negate, um, you know, Fables. Um, hmm. I think Unleashed the Inferno is pretty decent here. I think I'm going to bring in, like, some number of Duresses. I'm not sure the quite quite the right number yet, though. Cut Down's kind of mediocre. I think Teachings is not for this one after board. I generally like to trim on the Cruelty of Gix, especially when our opponent has more counter spells. Music Massacre is not really for this matchup. Hmm. Like, Infernal Grasp is Dece, right? Because it kills Shieldred. They're probably playing Sulkanar. I think I'm going to bring in the Terra Sunder. Just want to have all the answers for Fable here. Fable and Bankbuster. I think Grasp at, at at worst is better than cut down, so we can probably just cut that. Let's play like three three uh, duresses here. I kind of like the way this looks. I'm a little worried we're just gonna get rolled over by a fable token if it resolves though. I guess we just kind of have to rely on duress here. Cut down is so difficult in these matchups, right? Because like you want it for fable and you want it for underdog early game, but like a lot of times it's just super dead in your hand. Okay, I think I'm gonna roll with this. I kind of like March. March is just flexible to kill like Shieldred and Planeswalkers and stuff, so it's not terrible. So let's go ahead and uh, roll with this and uh, see how it goes. Let's go. All right, boys, here we go. Back for game two. We're on the draw here in a land light hand, but we have a lot of important cards in the matchup. So I'm gonna roll with it and kind of hope that we draw some lands here. Okay, I'll just go Glade here. Pretty good chance our bank buster just gets countered here. Well, not now. Jeez. Tough choice here. Do I go duress to try to hedge against Fable, or do I just play the grasp here for the immediate value? I think I duress here. Yeah, it's like so important that we hit Fable here. 
And they're playing Sulkanar, but they're also playing Evelyn the Evelyn here. Yeah, they're gonna take my Fable. Blitzeye's Harvester is a card that I thought about playing in this deck. I think like it's really important to kind of look at your matchups and assess like what you need in each matchup. And I just didn't find myself wanting Harvester in a lot of the mid-range matchups, which is like to be fair, that's like 80 to 85 percent of standard ladder these days. But <laughs> okay, so we got some good removal here. I guess Trespassers D's here. I kind of want to play Bankbuster in a turn with another spell, so I'm just going to play Trespasser here. The real question here is, am I willing to trade? That is a tough call. I suppose not, right? Yeah, I'll take it. We got Grass Bane Bankbuster. Bankbuster basically turns this off anyway, because it's a 4-4. I'm going to save my Grass for the cards that matter. Also, this slips to a 4-4 as well. Fable's actually a pretty good, pretty sweet pickup here. I do kind of put the shields down for a sec if I go for Fable, though. At least against Sulkanar, but that's fine. I can live with them getting, like, one good value off of Sulkanar. Fable is so important here. And I'm going to hang back here and try to block. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Probably shoot my token here, if I had to guess. I guess a card here is these two. Yep. Terra Sunder. Definitely discarding one Bank Buster. I guess we're just going to discard a Terra Sunder as well. It's not doing a ton here. Nice. Well, kill this. Play Bank Buster. Seems like a pretty decent play. Going to hold down the Ford here. We're going to flip this, which kind of sucks. And go up to 12, then go to 9 when I attack. Yeah, it's tough. Yep. Play the buster and pass. Set a stop in my upkeep just in case they play Shieldred here. Do their own fable, okay. I mean, let's screw our bank buster. Try to go for the block, right? Looks like our opponent made a little bit of an oopsies. Big yikes. Hey, we'll take it though. We'll take every fucking thing we can get here. Okay. So I got a couple ways I could play this, right? I can pass on their upkeep, I can tear asunder, and then uh, hold up Infernal Grasp here to make them kind of tap their mana, if you will. I think this Fable is so important that I'm just gonna go for this now and kind of plan my, the rest of my turn around what happens here. Nice. Okay, I think I'm still just gonna hold up the uh, the bank buster here. I don't want to give them a free treasure, and we'll probably just activate it here or grasp. Sure, blood token discarding a stroke makes sense. Ooh, siphon insight. That's some spicy attack right there. Sure. Sure. And they discarded my Terra Sunder. Well, that's kind of scary. Dress me. Yeah, I mean, I guess I let you take the grasp, right? No, they didn't take the grasp. Okay.
I mean, our opponent just, like, cannot understand that we have bigger creatures than them. <laughs> I mean, I get, I get, I get it. Like, you want to jam the, the Siphon Insight here. Just not worth it, though. Save your creature. Try to play for, like, a Meadow Masker or something here. Draw card. Okay. This will set a stop on their end step. Go to attacks. I mean, they're obviously just going to siphon inside here, so I'm just going to eat, like, their Soul Canar. Pass it over. If they tie new industry, this game becomes pretty interesting. Or even like unleash the inferno could be also kind of troublesome here. Safe and ultra clear. Yeah, pass it over. Passeroni, pepperoni, stromboli. Corpse appraiser, sure. Yeah. Seems good. Even their own guy is not the smartest thing I've seen. I mean, I guess it's the only creature. Never mind. Take back. Take, <laughs> take back what I said. Never mind. I wonder what they were thinking when they printed Corpse Appraiser, right? Like, it's so broken for an uncommon. So crazy good. It's like when you look at cards like that, you know, Wild Nacatl and stuff like that. It just makes you feel like, who is designing these cards, right? <laughs> Yeah, Reflector Mage, like, come on, dude. What are we doing here? All right, so our Graver Trespasser is going to flip here. All right, in the turn, draw a card. Ooh, Cruelty Egex is kind of sweet here because we get to discard the Evelyn. All right, in the turn, make a Trespasser. Exile, sure, I guess these two. We want to keep the lands in the yard. I wonder if we Grasp here, right? Grasp is kind of interesting here because like we already get to go Cruelty Agix on their creature in their hand. I kind of like using it here. Oh, baby. A oh, big Titan. Looks like we can do this, draw a card, and then go Cruelty here. It's also interesting this stays as a 4-4. I guess it can't flip, that makes sense. I guess we can attack first, copy the 4-4, attack for a bunch, crew this. Yeah, I kinda like that. That's kind of a sicko line, I like that. Yeah, no creatures. I'm just gonna submit zero here. I wanna keep the lands in the yard for Soul of Wind Grace. Alright, so they're down to five. Cruelty of Gix. First mode, obviously. Ooh, Solkanar or Evelyn. Solkanar, I feel like, gets them in the game more, so I guess we just take that. It's also, yeah, I mean, that was probably a misplay because I could have Cruelty Agix before so I can get another Trespasser trigger. I don't think it's huge, though. Yeah, that's a bad duress, if I've ever seen it. <laughs> All right, 2-0, baby, 2-0, 2-0, 2-0. Here we go. Going for the 3-0, baby, let's go. Let's roll. All right, boys, here we go. Round number three, the rubber match time, the witching hour, if you will. Uh, and this hand is incredibly slow, so I think we've got to just uh, toss this one back. Okay, this is more like it. Decent on the draw. If we draw into the land, our hand's incredible, so I think we keep this. Part of me really wants to just put Cut Down back. I think we're just supposed to put Bank Buster back, though. Yeah, 
yeah, because our man is going to be kind of tied. Yeah, I like this. Swamp, okay. Yeah, mono black is really, really good. Really, 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 really good. <laughs> Alright, teaching secure and mill over two lands. Doesn't matter, we're gonna draw another one next turn anyway. No big deal. I like this swamp. I'm a big fan of this one. Trespasser. Trespasser is so fucking good against this deck. It's like actually insane. <laughs> Give me a land. Ooh, you hate to see that. All right, well, game two. <laughs> no, 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 it's all good, it's all good, it's all good. I mean, we kept a two lander on the draw. Like, I think that's super fair. Nothing really to analyze here. We kept a good hand on the draw, it just didn't pan out. It happens. All right, we're gonna take four here. Childred, yep. Yep, that is very awkward for me. Alright, give me land. Okay. Instead of stopping my upkeep here. I mean, how do we win this game, right? It's looking pretty grim here. Um, I mean, we could play Trespasser, try to try to double block, hope they don't have a removal spell. Pretty low odds. Uh, I mean, play Fable here. Try to draw into a removal spell. I think that's my play here. We're gonna probably go down to like two here or something, but I think this is necessary. I think Fable is pretty much a necessity here. I don't really see a world where we win if we display a Trespasser. How do we block here? Uh, I guess we block. Definitely chumping something. Could just shove the whole team and just go all in on killing children. Is a line I could do. I kind of like doing this. The treasure token is so important, though. The treasure token is real, real important. Let me just do this. Sure. I don't mind this. Cause, like this treasure token is super important here. Assuming we're not going to hit another land here. Well, we actually did hit another land. This is a tap land, though. Um, I can't discard cards here because I need my life. Let me attack here. No, I don't have a removal spell. Man, that sucks. All right, well, Trespasser tapped land here. Proving ground, pass it over. Too. Yeah, we are just super dead. Super dead. <laughs> yeah, and invoke. All right, all right, dog. See you, game two. <laughs> all right. Well, we kept kind of a loose one that game, and they had a pretty sweet draw, so nothing we really do there. Okay. So mono black. I kind of like bringing in duress in this matchup, just because invoke despair is so backbreaking in this matchup. Um, I mean, I think Infernal Grasp is a D's. Cut Down's probably not good enough. Meat Hook, not really good enough. Teachings of the Kieran's dog shit in this matchup. Unleash is fine. Yeah, I mean, like, this is pretty much the same sideboard as we do in most mid range matchups. This matchup is tough because they have Graveyard Trespasser and Invoke Despair, two cards that are just super backbreaking. 
Also, like, Liliana has some really good spots against us. Yeah. Just gonna take another peek at what they got here. Yeah, I think I'm gonna roll this. I think this is pretty fair. I mean, cut down, I don't think it's great. Like, yes, it kills Evolve Sleeper. Yes, it kills Tenacious Underdog, but it doesn't kill Graveyard Trespasser, which is like the best card against our deck. So I think we just gotta roll with Duress and uh, Grasp and Terra Sunder. And uh, let's see if we can bounce back here. See if we can bounce back, baby. Let's go. Okay, here we go. Back for game two. Another two lander. I can't keep this hand. Too many bank busters. There is such a thing as too many bank busters, believe it or not. Ooh, this is a sweet end. Sure. Throw back a Titan here. Tap land. Okay. All right, well, let's start off on a duress. See what our opponent's cooking with. Invoke, bank buster, cut down. Pretty solid hand from the opponent. They're going to play an underdog next turn, most likely. Uh, I mean, I think we have to take the invoke, right? Like, I think that's kind of basically custom here. I mean, it's like we take the invoke or we take, like, Infernal Grasp. Uh, we take the invoke here. That's a tough one, though. Bank Buster, sure. Ooh, at least your front is a good draw. All right, well, we resolved the turn three Fable against Mono Black. Let's see what we can do. Yep, take four here. Gotta make him use their cut down here. I'm gonna go decline here. They're gonna cut down this before blocks. No surprise there. Right, well, I'm gonna go Inferno here. Kill that in their bank buster. Funny that, like, even despite that Grave 2 for 1, we're still, like, kind of behind in this game. <laughs> Alright, we'll flip the Fable. Play a Soul here. Definitely just wasted a, uh, a life there, but that's okay. I'm gonna sandbag this land. Maybe that's too greedy to sandbag a land here, but I think it's fine. I think it's important to uh, have a land for Wing Grace next turn. Do do do. Liliana, yep, kill both my creatures. Brutal. Brutal. Alright, well. Sack that. Absolutely brutal. Alright, big draw here. Well, that's a draw. I mean, it's not horrible, I guess. Such a tough play with this Cruelty Gex. Do we go plus or do we just get back to Soul of Wing Race right now? Soul of Wing Race is just kind of bad, right? It's just like a 5 4. But like, if we Cruelty Gex, we're going to be down to 5 with this, uh, this Tenacious Underdog. What can we get, though? There's some decent draws. Alright. Cruelty Gix it is. Screw it. We're going for the full chapter. Oh, nice. They just have a collection of books to spare. Bummer. Yeah, that'll probably do it. <laughs> that'll probably do it. Man, that sucks. Sucks that they just always have a book to spare in turn 5. Every game, even though I duress it. Brutal. Brutal, brutal, brutal. 
Yeah, I mean, it's what makes Mono Black good, right? It's probably got a pretty decent matchup against this deck. Bummer. Yep, I'm just going to go and scoop it up here. I'm just going to do it for the video, boys. Uh, I know, kind of an uneventful uh, ending of the video, getting kind of bounced by Mono Black, but is what it is. You know, you learn, you live, you learn in these matchups. Uh, and this kind of this kind of shows the power of Mono Black. You know, this is the power of Standard right now. It's the best deck in Standard, in my opinion. And uh, some games, you know, you know, obviously you could say, you know, we had bad draws or whatever. That, you know, that's that's a custom. That's what's going to happen. But I do think Mono Black is probably the best deck. If I had to play for a tournament this weekend, I'd play Mono Black. I just think it's that good. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Crush your day, destroy your day. Don't forget, drop a like, subscribe. Check out the deck in the deck list. Check out the deck in the description below. As always, check out the Discord. Check out all my socials. Check out all the stuff I'm doing. I'm doing a lot of cool stuff, so you don't want to miss it. And, uh, and yeah, we'll be back next week. Uh, probably going to change it up from Standard because we've been playing Standard for like the last five or six weeks. So we're changing it up. We're doing something new next week. And uh, can't wait to see you guys there. Peace. <laughs>